Hi, I'm Dr. Jeff Ripperda. I'm a family practice physician in Murfreesboro, Illinois, where I work for Shawnee Health Service. Shawnee has offices scattered throughout Southern Illinois, including in Marion, Carterville, Carbondale, and Murfreesboro. So what's special about me? Well, some people would say not much, but what I think is special about my practice is that I help treat opiate addiction. I got a special license from the government several years back that allows me to do that. So since about 2011, I've treated roughly 400 people. Does that make me an expert? I don't know, stick with me through the videos and we'll find out what you think at the end. I hope to give you a little bit of an explanation about what happens in a person's body when they become addicted to opiates. And it's a long, complicated chemical process that happens in the body, but my brain isn't quite big enough to understand that, so I'll try to keep things a little bit simple. Before you can really understand what opiate addiction is, you have to understand why we have pain in the body and how pain works. Pain's actually really important for keeping us alive. If somebody is born without the ability to feel pain, they typically don't lead a very long life because they're gonna die of something that they should have been able to avoid. So think about what would happen to you if you touch a hot stove and you don't feel pain. You're not gonna pull your hand away, you're gonna damage your hand, you're gonna possibly get an infection and you might die of that infection. Or if you break your leg and you don't know better than to walk on it because if it doesn't hurt, you're gonna do further damage. So pain is important. The way pain happens in our body is it travels along electrical pathways that we call nerves. If you picture a nerve, it really kind of looks like a spaghetti strand. It's a long, thin, noodle-like thing, and it just transmits a signal from one end to the other. So, let's say you go and you touch that stove. What happens is your finger senses that the stove is hot, sends a signal up your arm, up to your head, back down your arm, and says, ouch, that's hot, please stop touching me. Now, like any of you know who have experienced pain before, and that's probably all of you watching this, I would presume, anybody knows that feels pain, you get an initial wave of pain, but then the pain kind of dies down a little bit after that. That's because our body makes natural painkillers that help to soothe the pain a little bit. It's the same reason that if you're hammering a nail and you accidentally whack your thumb, that again, you get that initial wave of pain, but then it lets up. It's because your body thinks that you have gotten the message and says, okay, you're good. You know to not damage yourself anymore. Stop it. So our body lessens the pain through a couple of different mechanisms. Mostly it releases some natural painkillers into our bloodstream, and there's a few of those, but there's one particular brand that's kind of important. They're called opioids. An opioid painkiller sticks to something called a mu receptor on a nerve cell. We're gonna get pretty sciencey here, so try to stick with me. So an opioid receptor sticks to what's called, again, a mu receptor on a nerve cell, and what happens when an opioid sticks to a, a mu receptor is you get the nerve turned down. So the nerve cannot transmit as many pain signals anymore. So you feel less pain because again, the nerve isn't sending as many pain signals from your hand up to your brain. You also get a little release of a chemical called dopamine. Dopamine is our body's feel good chemical. When your dopamine level goes up, it makes you happy. If you eat a food you like, if your sports team wins a championship, if somebody rubs your back in just the right way, you get a little wave of dopamine. It is everything that makes you feel happy in life. You see somebody you love, you get a little release of dopamine. So again, the way our body helps naturally relieve our pain is by turning on mu receptors, which again, turns nerve signals down, and by releasing a wave of dopamine, which gives you a little wave of happiness. So the pain doesn't go on absolutely positively forever. If you've watched the news at all over the past 10 years, I'm sure you've seen coverage of what's being called the opiate crisis in the United States. So what's an opiate? An opiate is something that turns on those same mu receptors as our body's natural painkillers, except an opiate is a man-made thing that we stick in the body that turns on those same receptors and causes the same response, meaning you get nerve signals turned down and a release of dopamine. What are examples of some opiates? Fentanyl, heroin, hydrocodone, oxycodone, morphine, and several others. Now those are all known by some brand names as well. You may have heard of Vicodin or of Norco, which are hydrocodone, of Oxycontin or Percocet, which are Oxycodone, MS Cotton, which is morphine. Fentanyl doesn't really have another name, it's just fentanyl. And heroin has no medicinal use, so there's no brand name of that. But those are all examples of opiates. So if a person were to start taking an opiate, like by taking pills that they bought off the street or by shooting up heroin, or shooting up fentanyl, basically what that person is doing is turning on those mu receptors on their nerve cells. So when a person turns on enough mu receptors in their body, it makes them feel high. Why does it do that? Remember the dopamine I talked about a little while ago? That's why you get a big surge of dopamine and it makes you feel like you're absolutely positively on top of the world. So a lot of times people will ask me, 
why do you think people use drugs? It's because they get high. That's why. <laughs> you get the wave of dopamine and also it turns down the nerve signal so you don't feel pain or unpleasant things nearly as much. There's a big difference between our body's natural opioids and the man-made or man-derived opiates that we are sticking into our bodies. The big difference is this. The opiates are a whole heck of a lot stronger and we also get a lot more of them at a time. Hydrocodone, for example, is at least 20 to 30 times stronger than the natural opioids that our body makes. So first of all, somebody who's shooting up heroin is turning on those mu receptors, which means they're turning down nerve cells and getting a way bigger burst of dopamine than they could ever get naturally from our body's natural painkillers. So you fill up a much greater percentage of the mu receptors in the body, and they're also activated much more strongly than they would have been by your natural painkillers. Here becomes the problem, though. A lot of people that get addicted to opiates don't intentionally start out to get addicted. They just like the way they feel when they take those medications. But after a while, if you take the medications day to day, you get some changes that happen in the body. And they're not good changes. First of all, the nerves lose the ability to regulate themselves, which means that a person's ability to regulate pain pretty well can go away. The body will also stop making dopamine unless it has an opiate on board. So most of us walking around day to day, there's some natural painkillers floating around our bloodstream, there's some dopamine floating around our bloodstream, but if somebody is using opiates every single day at a high dose, eventually the body is gonna figure out that it doesn't need to make natural painkillers, that it doesn't need to make dopamine, and it's gonna stop producing those things. So what happens if somebody takes opiates for a long time, every day, day in and day out, and they suddenly stop? Well, they're gonna go into withdrawal, but what does that mean? And this is pretty important for somebody who has never been addicted to anything to understand, because what I hear a lot is family members of somebody who's addicted to an opiate will ask, why can't they just stop? Here's why they can't stop. They've changed their bodies in a very fundamental way. First of all, they can no, regu no longer regulate pain. So here's what that looks like. If somebody is taking an opiate for a long time and they stop, the nerves that were being regulated downward are gonna go haywire. So that causes all these physical symptoms, including very bad tearing of the eyes, including production of a whole lot of mucus, so their noses are gonna snot like nobody's business, they're gonna produce a ton of saliva and had a hard time not drooling, their bowels are gonna go nuts and they're gonna have terribly bad crampy diarrhea, they're gonna get uh, goosebumps on their skin, and they're gonna have intense pain throughout all the muscles in their body. Again, because they've been turning those nerves down with opiates, by turning on those mu receptors, by turning down the nerves, and now when those nerves aren't being turned down at all, they don't know how to self-regulate and they go absolutely bonkers. That effect generally lasts about five to seven days before it totally goes away. So even if somebody is really committed to trying to get off opiates who's addicted, and they stop, they're still gonna have to suffer quite a bit for five to seven days to get through that if they were to stop cold turkey. I want you to imagine if you're not an addict that you feel just God awful like that, that you have body aches from head to toe, crampy diarrhea, you're sweating, you're producing mucus, you're producing saliva, your eyes are tearing, you can't get out of bed because you feel so terrible, and you knew that just taking one more pill is gonna make that feeling go away. It's really hard not to do that, which is why addiction is such a bear to get over. But let's say somebody is a, a strong enough person, a committed enough person that they're able to stop the opiates for that first week. What's gonna happen after that? Well, remember again, let's go back to the dopamine that we talked about a little bit ago. They're still not gonna start producing dopamine once again. And dopamine is central to feeling good. So because they've been giving their body opiates forever and the opiates are triggering the production of dopamine, again, their natural production of dopamine is gonna drop. So that means even if somebody who's addicted to opiates can stop taking the pills and they get through the first week of withdrawal, they're still gonna have problems with low energy, with feeling depressed, with having um, something like restless leg syndrome because a lack of dopamine causes that. This means that their legs are gonna feel itchy and like they can't um, hold them still throughout the course of the night and just generally uncomfortable. So again, even if somebody gets through the miserable week of physical withdrawal at the start, they're still gonna have problems with an inability to feel joy, an inability to feel happiness, and an inability to enjoy, enjoy life after that. That's miserable. It's just miserable, and that's why people have such a hard time getting, getting clean off drugs after they've been using opiates for so long. So what is the success rate? So if we take somebody who has a problem with addiction to opiates, and someone just says to them, why don't you just quit, cold turkey. Over the course of a year, believe it or not, about 1% of opiate addicts are able to do that. 
are able to stop using the drugs cold turkey, suffer the withdrawal, get through the fact that their body's not making dopamine anymore, and um, not go back to using again. Most people can't. It's just too hard for all those reasons I said. They've changed their brains in some very fundamental ways. One of the reasons that the opiate crisis has gotten so much attention over the past 10 years is because of the number of overdose deaths that have happened. And various times over the course of the past 10 years, opiate overdose has been the number one cause of death in various age groups in the United States. That's a big deal. Any time a process is the number one cause of death in any age group, that's an important problem worth looking at. So what happens in an overdose? Sometimes addicts will come in and they'll tell me, hey, I was with this person and they nodded out would be the phrase that they use, which basically means somebody took enough of an opiate that they couldn't be wakened, that they were too sleepy, too somnolent, too tired, and no matter what you say or do to that person, they're not going to wake up um, until the effects of the drug have worn off. What's happened there is that that person has turned down enough of the nerve signals in their brain with the opiates such that waking them is actually physically impossible. Their brain is just being turned way down. Um, in an overdose where somebody dies, what happens there is that the person's brain has been turned down to such a level that the brain can no longer send nerve signals to the lungs to tell it to breathe. So literally when somebody dies of an opiate overdose, it just means that they just quit breathing. And it's because they've turned on all the nerve signals that run from their brain to their lungs. The lungs and the brain can no longer talk to each other. The lung receives no signals telling it to breathe and the person just stops. I should talk a little bit about the difference between addiction versus physical dependence because a lot of people get those two things confused. Physical dependence means that a person is taking a substance that if they quit taking, the person will have withdrawal. That can happen to a lot of different drugs. It can also happen to some medications. A lot of antidepressants can cause withdrawal. Some blood pressure medications can cause withdrawal. Some seizure medications, some headache medications. Basically, withdrawal just means if you are taking a drug or a medication for a while and you stop, you're going to feel bad. So you can be physically dependent on a substance but not addicted to it. The difference between physical dependence and addiction is this. In addiction, a person will do things that are detrimental to their life to get a hold of that substance. Meaning, they might sever family ties, they might betray friends, they might make poor financial decisions, they're gonna spend way too much of their life chasing that substance and way too much of their life thinking about that substance. So if somebody has taken an antidepressant and exactly like they should, they stop taking the antidepressant and they start to feel kind of weepy, sad, itchy all over the place, we're not gonna say that that person is addicted because they're not doing things that are bad for them in general to get a hold of that substance. Somebody who is using heroin regularly is probably gonna be making some decisions that lead to bad things in their lives. So that's the difference between addiction and physical dependence. It's really about what effect does the substance have on a person's life in general. So I hope by watching this you've learned a little bit about what happens in the body when a person becomes addicted to opiates. Again, my disclaimer is that the process inside the body is a whole lot more complicated than I've portrayed it here, but this is the simplified form that my little pea brain understands. Um, and how I think about it day to day when I'm practicing medicine in my, in my clinic. I'd also invite you to watch some of my other videos. I'm making videos that describe what buprenorphine does, which is the single most effective treatment for opiate addiction, and also talking about what happens if somebody is addicted to opiates and that person is pregnant, as well as specifically for my patients who come to see me in Murfreesboro and what they can expect if they come to be treated for opiate addiction with me.